So let's talk about, first of all, what are you expecting from ESPN? And can they make up for whatever growth they're starting to diminish there for out of movies? E ESPN plus uh, the, the direct-to-consumer streaming service is going to be a little bit light uh, right now because they did not have any of the big sporting events of this quarter. The, the World Cup, the U.S. Golf Open, um, they, they didn't bid, and those rights have become so obscenely expensive that it's going to be more and more difficult for ESPN to stay in the leadership role and generate the kind of revenue and profits it but did from cable. But they've really got their foot in the accelerator when it comes to, for example, the movie studio. They've had some big oh, movies they, out there making a fortune off of them. Disney owns Hollywood right now. They have 35% of, of uh, the box office in the U.S. Uh, the next closest competitor is Universal with 14%. So Disney is king of Hollywood. So between the movie studios and the theme parks, it seems is it's given them the luxury of time, if nothing else, to kind of deal with the ESPN issue, right? Well, the question is, just, are they attacking it and are they dealing with it's it? It's not just ESPN. Bob Iger has been a little bit slow and laggardly in terms of uh, appreciating the cord cutting that's been going on in his main profit center, which is cable. Uh, 33 million cord cutters in the last 12 months uh, versus 27 a year ago. So it's really accelerating and Disney's doing exactly the right thing by going over the top and direct to consumer. Do you think we'll get some details on that? Uh, in not the not a whole yet? lot, no. Um, what he's going to do is say, we're waiting for European approval of uh, Fox Entertainment assets, but uh, what everybody is going to be focused on is the Disney streaming service that will uh, kick off probably second half of 2019. Okay, so how important are the 21st Century Fox Entertainment assets to that that streaming service? They're they're critical because Netflix is spending. They say 10. It's closer to 12, 13 billion dollars this year, and it's going to be more next year. Disney has all of that content, fantastic high quality content that's going to make the Disney streaming service uh, a very viable competitor to Netflix or anybody else. And what's really important is that it, Amazon's coming in. Google's coming in, um, probably Apple right now. So it's not going to be an easy, uh, no-compete field for Disney to com to uh, navigate. And then where does Sky fit into all of this? Sky, well, Bob Iger continues to say that Sky is the crown jewel of the Fox assets that he's acquiring. So I think he's still going to go uh, up, up, up uh, against Comcast in a why, bidding war. Why is it so important? Because Sky for, for, is really, from my perspective, the salvation of ESPN. It get, makes ESPN instantly global. They have Premier League and a number of other major European sports rights. and. The interesting story, though, for Sky is it, it's going to command 35, 34, 35 billion dollars when whoever gets it, Comcast or Disney. That's half of what Disney paid for the entire Fox Entertainment assets. It's, it's a very pricey hmm. commodity. Well, but, and when you talk about obscenely high sports rights, Sky has a shortcut to get to right to those obscenely high scores because you pay the $35 billion, but then you right. still have to pay those bills on all those licenses. <laughs> exactly. <fees. laughs> Sky, Sky's p price for uh, the Premier League in Europe is almost half of their market cap. Yeah, at the same time, these companies, not just Disney, but for that matter, Comcast, have very little choice. I want to put back up that chart we just had. It came from our colleague, Lucas Shaw, that basically shows viewing patterns of television right. accord, across different age groups. So you can see the old guys, that would include me, is that white one up at the top. We're still watching TV. <laughs> Look at that red line, which is the youngsters. And as you, get, as you get younger and younger, you watch less and less television. You've got to go over the top. You have no choice. It <laughs> The Pew Research just came out uh, earlier this week with a, a survey that said 42 percent of teenagers, that's 14 to 21, they, they are 100 percent of their lives on their mobile streaming service. Um, that's where the future is. That's if, my 16-year-old son. <laughs> that is literally my 16-year-old yeah, son. If you're not in that market and offering them what they want, you're out of business. So that implies that the costs we were just talking about for this stuff, it's almost no object. I mean, is there at some point, does Disney come up against that? Is there, is there some gonna, cost that's too high? Disney has the greatest treasure trove of content that's ever been assembled. Uh, when you add in the Fox assets, it's dynamite. 
The problem is it's not, it's, it, it's not a nice confined market the way cable used to be. It's a very, very fragmented competitive market. And one of the most interesting things is that Disney is getting shut out of China right now. Their latest movie, the Christopher Robin movie uh, with Winnie the Pooh, um, got disapproved and has no distribution in China. Hmm. Porter, isn't there another problem as well? And it's going to happen after the bell today, because Bob Iyer has to go into an earnings call and account right. for earnings per share and show that it's growing, things like that. Netflix doesn't have that problem. Jeff Bezos doesn't have that problem. <laughs> they go and say, we're growing really fast, so it doesn't matter whether we're making money or not. How can you compete in that world? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, the problem that, that Bob Iger has is twofold. One, he, he's got a lot of competition to deal with. Two, he's got to integrate the Disney and Fox assets into the Disney Channel, ESPN, and Hulu. Hulu is the sleeper. Uh, I think it could be very, it's got 20 million subscribers. It's losing a billion dollars a year right now, but it's going to start making money, unlike Netflix.